Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up Crossover so that you can get the most out of Windows games and applications on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I'll be going through the installation process and all of the basics, but also at the end I'm going to go through all of the advanced setup tips too. So the first thing is that all of the steps that I'm going to tell you about today are going to be linked in the Crossover Apple Gaming Wiki article. So this article is a simple article which shows all the steps I'm going to talk about today and also any kind of future tweaks that are going to come out in the future. The very first thing is that we need to install Crossover. So I'm going to leave a link to the description for the Code Weavers website. We can click on the menu item here and we can go to the Crossover section and then we can come down to the bottom here and we can actually see that Crossover for Mac is available to buy here. Now I do recommend that you try this out first. This is a 14 day free trial which will allow you to use all of the features of Crossover, allow you to test out all the games and applications that you want to try and make sure that it works for you before you make a purchase. If you do decide to purchase the Crossover software, I do recommend that you use our promo code Apple Gaming Wiki. You can see the prices here, £32, £48. You can apply the coupon and then you'll get a huge discount. So in terms of which version that you'd want to buy, I'd really consider buying Crossover Pro. So this gives you 12 month support. The reason you want to buy Crossover Pro rather than Crossover 1 is because Crossover Pro gives you 12 months of support. And because we're on version 20 at the time of recording and version 21, it's going to come out in the next few months. They release one version per year. You don't want to be stuck on the last version. So for a little bit more money, you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest version of Crossover. And this is especially useful as well when the new operating systems come out. The latest version 21 is probably going to have better support for macOS Monterey. So I'm just going to go to the trial page and then download the trial showing that we're going to download the latest version, which is Crossover 20. 0.4 and I'm going to allow this now. Once I've downloaded the application, I'm going to put it in my applications folder. Once it's in my applications folder, I'm going to double click and open it. And I'll click open here. So that's telling us we've got a 14 day free trial. So I would recommend that you make full use of this and see if this is the right kind of software for you. Let's click try now. Crossover is now installed. What we're going to do now is start installing some games. So the first launcher that I'm going to install is called Steam. So if you've used Steam before, if you're a PC gamer, I'm sure you've got a Steam library already. Steam is probably the most popular Windows gaming platform. So I'm going to show you how to install Steam and then also download and install games from the Steam platform. So once we've got Crossover open like this, I'm just going to click on install a Windows application here. And what I'm going to do is type in the word Steam. And I've got my list here. This is the second one. The other ones are not that relevant. So what I'm doing here is I'm installing Steam through the Crossover software installer. And this is what's known as a cross ties. So that's basically the pre-configured settings for installing Steam. And this is going to do all the configurations for you. So I've selected Steam here, press continue here. You can see that it skipped ahead to the finish section here. That means that you can just click install to finish everything. But I just want to show you the other tabs here, which we skipped over. The first thing here is that in terms of the installer, Crossover have their own installer for the Steam software. So we don't have to manually download Steam from the Steam website. We can just accept their default installation for Steam. The bottle refers to a kind of folder where the pseudo Windows files are going to exist on the Mac. You can see here that it's pre-selected the Windows 7 64-bit bottle. So at the time of recording, the Windows 7 64-bit bottle are the most compatible for Steam games. You might be tempted to select a Windows 8 or Windows 10 64-bit bottle, but those seem to work much worse for some reason. So once I get to the install and finish section, I'm just going to click install and it's going to install Steam for me. So it's kind of running through all the dependencies that Steam needs in order to use the Wine compatibility layer. It's downloading things like fonts. Here we have the actual Steam application folder. So I'm going to click install here. So now that this is complete, we're just going to run the actual Steam software. So it's uh, downloading the software here. So we're just going to let that run. So once we've got Steam installed, what I'm going to do is to log into my existing Steam account. So if you don't have a Steam account already, I do recommend that you create one for free. I'm going to log into my one right now. So this is the standard Steam God authentication. This sees your crossover Steam as a new computer. So it's going to ask us to authenticate using email. So as you can see now, I have the Windows version of Steam all loaded up and uh, you can see that this is running through Crossover. This has the kind of Windows minimize and the X button in the top right hand corner, whereas the Mac version is on the top left hand corner. And you can see that once we've installed Steam, it's kind of given access to virtually all of our games. So a lot of these games are not on Mac operating system, but we can still install them and then attempt to run them. Not all of them will actually work, of course. So what you find is that Crossover games have varied compatibility on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and it's best to check this list 
list of games on the Apple Gaming Wiki website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So the compatibility and the performance of games is quite variable, and there's often various fixes that you'll need to apply. So for example, in Fallout 4, we actually have some issues with getting the game to launch at all. So to show you what kind of fixes need to be applied, for example, this wine override is something that has to be done on some Game Boy Engine games, for example, Skyrim. So for example, to apply these overrides for the audio and voice is not working, we'd have to go into the wine configuration settings of this bottle. So what you do is you select the bottle and then you click on wine configuration and then it comes up with this menu and then we can go to libraries and then we can select the override here. So this one's asking us for X3 audio one underscore six. So I can actually use this override list here. I can find that exact uh, listing here. So this is the X3 audio one underscore six. And I can click add here to add this override. What you'll find is that this particular fix works for Fallout 4, but if you have issues with sound in other games, this particular fix might apply to that game too. It's best to check the Apple Gaming Wiki website. So another good resource is the crossovers compatibility database. So you can often find information here. And another useful resource is Wine HQ. And because crossover is based on wine, then using something like the Wine HQ database is often helpful for for finding other fixes too. So another useful resource is ProtonDB. What you'll find is that Codeweavers is heavily involved in the development of Proton, which is a compatibility layer for games on the Linux operating system, which is also based on the Wine compatibility layer as well. So sometimes you'll find some extra information here about how to fix certain audio issues or graphical issues or any other compatibility issues. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to install the most important dependency. So I've quit out of Steam and then I've opened crossover here and I'm going to click on install a Windows application and I type in the word DirectX. And what we want to select here is DirectX for modern games. And uh, this is the most important dependency. Most games will actually make use of this. I'm going to press continue here. And then we are going to select the Steam bottle that we created earlier. So DirectX will be installed within this bottle. That means all the games that Steam installs later will be using DirectX for modern games. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that download and install in the bottle. So here I'm just gonna click yes, I'm gonna click I accept the agreement, and then I'm going to install DirectX. So when that's finished, we'll just click finish here. And now that's complete. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to enable DXVK and eSync. So these are settings which will allow some games to run and also to improve some frame rates as well. So within the crossover application, I'm going to click the wine bottles here, which will give a menu bar here with the list of bottles. And if I select Steam here and then I right click or control click and then go to settings here, I'll have the option to enable these settings. So the important ones here are DXVK. So this allows DirectX 11 games to run on crossover. So that's quite a lot of modern games. And as well, this performance enhanced synchronization called eSync, and this improves performance in some games. eSync can make some games run faster, but it also means that some games just won't launch at all with this option on. So it's really worth experimenting with this eSync functionality. We also have this documented on the Apple Gaming Wiki website to see if that works. So mostly I will just enable the DXVK backend, and then I'll also enable the eSync as well. And this will require us to reboot the bottle. But that just means that if we did have Steam open, it will just restart Steam itself. Occasionally you might want to disable eSync if you have a specific game that won't run with it on. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is how to navigate the file system. So some fixes will often ask you to place files in the C drive and in order to navigate to the C drive of this particular bottle we can just control or right click on Steam and we can click here to open the C drive here. So you can see that the path of this file is within the application support folder so it's not something you'll easily find. So if you look at drive C here this simulates the C drive of standard Windows computer and if there are any fixes or workarounds that need to be installed within the user documents folder or somewhere else in the Windows file system then you can find it all here. So now I'm going to talk to you about the beta and nightly builds of Crossover. So at the time of recording we're using Crossover 20. Crossover 21 will be released in the future however we can actually download a beta version of Crossover. So what you need to do is to apply for the beta tester program. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. So the beta tester program is only available if you make an application once you've got a paid version of the crossover software and this is going to give you access to the beta center so this is the beta version of crossover 21 and we also have access 
to the nightly builds as well. So these are the builds that are created every day and these often have new fixes for games. For example, Grand Theft Auto 5 greatly benefits from using either the beta or the latest nightly build of the software. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to actually download the beta version of the software. So all I'm gonna do is click this link from the download section of the beta center. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. And once I've downloaded the application, I can actually find it within my own downloads folder. So what I normally do is I like switching between the beta version and then the public versions of the software. So I often call this something like beta 21. If I actually move this to my applications folder, I like to have them side by side. You can see that crossover 21 has got a different icon anyway. So what I'm gonna do is quit out of crossover here. So when I quit out of my public release of Crossover 20 and I double click on Crossover Beta 21, it's gonna ask me whether I want to do an upgrade of my file. So that's using my existing bottle and then upgrading it for the new beta version. So I'm gonna press upgrade here and it's just gonna load up my previously loaded bottle up here. So nothing's gonna change with the settings and I can actually easily switch back so I can quit out of the beta. And then if I click on Crossover 20, the latest public release, it's gonna ask me again if I want to upgrade my files, which I'll do now. And it's gonna bring me back to Crossover 20, the last public release, the non-beta release. And that's gonna bring back my bottle that I had earlier. So lots of people ask me about how to track frame rates within games. So within Steam, it's fairly straightforward. We just go to the Steam settings here, and then we can go to the in-game setting and we can turn on FPS counters, and then we turn the high contrast color back on. And then in the top left of any compatible game, we'll have a little green frame rate counter. However, this doesn't actually work in a lot of games because the Steam overlay will not load. The way to get around this is to take advantage of the DXVK counter. So this will actually only apply to DirectX 11 games. So you need to do is to open finder and click on go to folder in go and then go to the library folder and then go to application support and then into and then double click on crossover and then go into bottles and then steam then we're going to select the cxbottle.conf we're going to control click and open with text edit and then at the bottom of the file, we're gonna enter this line here, dxvk underscore HUD equals one. This is code which is at the bottom of the crossover article on the Apple Gaming Wiki website. So you could just copy and paste this here, and then I'm gonna click file and save. So if you have a Steam game which uses DirectX 9 and the overlay doesn't work, then you won't be able to track frame rates, I'm afraid. So another question I get asked a lot is how do we add external drives? So for example, in Steam itself, I can go to settings here and if I wanted to add an actual external drive, I can click on the Steam library folders here and want to add a library folder, but there's no option here to add an external drive. We need to add it using the correct file path. So here we have just the C drive. We don't have my external solid state drive, which is listed here. So what we can do is to navigate to the Z drive and we're gonna click OK to allow access to this external volume. And this is the kind of root view of our actual computer. And what we can do is scroll down to the bottom and go to the volume section here. And then I'm gonna click OK for this permission to access my volumes. And then I'll have access to all of the connected logical volumes here. And that is how you add external drives onto Crossover. So this concludes the end of the crossover for M1 Apple Silicon Gaming Guide. There are other ways to run Windows games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, including through Parallels. So if you're interested in this, please check out the link in the description on how to get Windows 10 or 11 ARM running on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If I did miss anything out, it'll be included in the crossover article on the Apple Gaming Wiki website. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.